Hi, I'm Anne. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing the Penguin Classics tag. I saw this on Michael K. Vaughn's channel and even though I wasn't tagged, I think it's an interesting idea of just how popular Penguin Classics are. So I kind of wanted to explore in this video why Penguin Classics above every other type of publisher is just so popular in the classic readers. I mean, you you have great copies of, you know, Banton Classics. Though those are really good classics. You also have Barnes and Noble's classics that you see everywhere and I have quite a few of those. You also have Signet Classics. Those are pretty good too. So why is it that Penguin Classics are considered some of the best? Um, and I'm going to explore that in the video while I do this tag. So this will be half tag, half exploration video. So let's start with number one is Penguin Classics are the best reprint volumes in the whole world. How many do you currently own? I do not own that many. I currently own about 16. Um, they are probably like two piles of these. They're not that many. I have never actively uh, collected Penguin Classics until maybe a year or two ago, and I have been looking for them more. So a few, quite a few of these that I actually have collected uh, were in the last couple years that I bought. Now, I did notice that a lot of my uh, teachers and professors in college would usually assign us to read the copy that was from Penguin Classics. So it's not simply casual readers that seem to love Penguin Classics so much, but teachers, at least my teachers, seem to agree. So number two is Penguin's evolved roughly 70 million years ago. What's your history with Penguin Classics? And like I said, I never read Penguin Classics or got into them. I did not actively seek Penguin Classics. For me, a classic was a classic. I didn't care what copy I had. Sure, it helped if it was pretty or not, but I didn't care. And then I saw just how much, especially on booktube, since I've been on booktube, Penguin Classics are just so popular as collecting. And I went on Penguin Classics Wikipedia page to kind of understand what they were more. And I just want to say like just how many designs there are. There are the Penguin Nature Classics, the Penguin Modern Classics, um, the Penguin Enriched Classics. I couldn't find a picture of the Penguin Popular Classics, the Penguin Designer Classics, the Penguin Mini Modern Classics, the Penguin Little Black Classics, the Pocket Penguins, <laughs> and you have multiple different color covers and designs within that. So I'm just going to show you an example of a few of mine. So for example, that book of Gilgamesh, that's one design that you see quite a lot. Uh, there are also this design, and then the one that is more modern that I see a lot of is this design. You see that probably most commonly. But there's also this design, which seems to be a little bit older. There's also this design, which I didn't even know was a Penguin Classic. And also the popular one right now is to get the cloth bound ones. And there will be people who have on their bookshelves like complete collections or like so many, like 30 to 40 of these cloth bound books. I'm like, okay. So they seem to be a collector's item. And that makes sense that you would want your bookshelf to look seamless and pretty. Like aesthetic of bookshelves is very popular right now. However, I think there's a deeper level to why Penguin Classics are so popular and they are considered one of the best. So the the guy who um the guy who was the main editor of Penguin Classics up until the 60s, I believe, so from the 40s to the 60s, he was Renu. This guy V Renu, he was a person who valued the type of translations that you got. I mean, it was his translation of the Odyssey that was published first. And I'll actually get to that um, in a minute with number five. But because of that, you see a fascination with picking out the best translation. And so Penguin Classics also have a reputation of being the best copies. They often have a very detailed, well thought out introduction, which I would recommend avoiding until you've read the book because oftentimes they give spoilers, which I don't understand. I don't like it. But then they also have in the back, they usually have um, more notes and information. There's a lot of reasons that Penguin Classics are so popular. Do I think they deserve the hype they have? I'm not sure. I think Penguin Classics are good. I've been impressed with all the Penguin Classics I have read, but I don't necessarily think they are better or worse than other 
editions. Um, I think it is down to the translator and less of like the copy of the book, but I can understand the appeal in having a complete collection of say the cloth bound penguin editions, but I'm curious what you think. So moving on to this tag, number four is the emperor penguin is the most recognizable species, but the Adelie is everyone's favorite. What's your favorite penguin classic? And it's hard for me to choose one because I don't have an expansive knowledge of Penguin classics. I've only read a few, but I'm going to go with the Epic of Gilgamesh simply because, as I talked about earlier, they have quite an extensive introduction in all of these. And when you are re reading such an ancient epic as Gilgamesh, I mean, he, this, this guy wrote down his tale in ancient Mesopotamia, which were translated from tablets. Yes, they were originally written on tablets. This particular copy is translated by N.K. Sanders, and I have read another copy. I got it on audiobook, and then I got it just on ebook, and then I think I got another version from the library, and this one is by far my, the best copy. And I think the reason I picked this is because I have read a copy uh, different copies. And I think when it comes to Penguin Classics, you can't say this is the best until you have read different editions. Because if you get an edition of, say, Charles Dickens, any of his stories, all of his are written in English. So it doesn't seem like it will be much different over the different editions, because you're going to get it in English. It's not like different translations. Number five is Penguin Classics began in 1946 with E.V. Renou's translation of the Odyssey. What's your favorite book from 1946 or from the 40s in general? I have picked four, and this gets us slightly off topic from Penguin Classics, but I do need to do this. And the two that I've read and two that I haven't read, the two that I have read is Man's Search for Meaning by Victor A. E. Frankel, an exceptional book, and The Little White Horse by Elizabeth Goge. Very different books, very different stories. I mean, one is a uh, psychology understanding the prison camps in Nazi Germany, and the other one is like a children's fantasy. <laughs> And then the two that I haven't read, I have the autobiography of a yogi, which I do want to read. And then I also have the Hojin Murders, which were originally in Japanese and have been translated into English. So those are the four. Number six is Penguin Classics try to enshrine the classics of literature. Name some books you'll, you'd like to see enshrined. And I'm not going to pick anything of this because here is my idea. The whole point of Penguin Classics are to look at classics, the greatest books of all times, and in a sense, enshrine them. Try to publish them in new editions to bring them to a modern audience. And I just want to show you because I was surprised at how many Penguin Classics there are. And if you scroll through just the Wikipedia page of Penguin Classics, it is um, quite bonkers. What you also see in there and what I appreciate is that Penguin Classics is not just about English classics. It's about classics from around the world. So a lot of the classics they publish are translating text. A good example is The Betrothed. This is an Italian novel. The great thing about Penguin Classics is because they are so popular, because they're renowned for being very good translations, they are bringing into light uh, books that you wouldn't necessarily otherwise hear about. Because, I mean, I don't speak Italian. I am not Italian. I've never lived in Italy. So when would I ever come across an Italian classic? I probably wouldn't unless I tried to search it out. But through Penguin Classics, there's a lot of more niche books that maybe was translated and published by a small publishing company, but it wasn't renowned in like a big publishing company. So I think that's one benefit of Penguin Classics. So I'm curious what you think about Penguin Classics. Do you think they're overhyped? Um, do you think they are a good series to collect? Do you think people collect them because they are the best translations and the best ed editions? Or is it more because they do come in such big collections and people do like the idea of like having aesthetically pretty bookshelves? I'm curious what your thoughts are 
are on Penguin Classics. Uh, I don't think I'll be tagging anyone in this video because it was much more of a discussion video even if I had a tag as part of it. But I am getting more into Penguin Classics and kind of understanding the appeal of having a big collection and also realizing that they are quite good um, editions. Do I think they are the best editions out there? Not necessarily. I think some of my copies that are by different publishing companies are just as good as Penguin Classics. So do I entirely understand the immense appeal of Penguin Classics? No, no, I really do not. I, I think they are overhyped in many sense because, like I said, Oxford, Oxford World Classics, these books are almost just as good. Same thing with Signet Classics. They are really good books too. So do I necessarily think that Penguin Classics deserve the hype? I'm not sure. I'd love to know your thoughts down in the comments. If you like this video, like, subscribe. I post every Saturday and Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern time, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye. Oh, Loki. Oh, he comes to visit us. I say goodbye. Bye.